Hello, welcome to the TVC podcast with me, Tony Lowe. Today, I was thinking about a topic which I'm going to call the ocean is a desert. Let's talk about that at the uh, surface level first, right? What do we mean when we say the ocean is a desert? And for all of you who will know, the idea is that the ocean, despite being the largest body of water on the planet, is a desert because it's completely devoid of fresh drinking water, right? If you're stuck in the middle of the ocean, then if the blaring sun doesn't kill you, the other thing you're most likely to die of is uh, is thirst because there's no clean water anywhere. You're surrounded by water, yet there is no water for you to access. A really interesting way to think about things, right? Or a really interesting way to see it. And so that's why the ocean is arguably the largest desert in the world. Now, I was thinking about that in relation to the kind of situation we find ourselves in in the modern world. And I was thinking about it in relation to different aspects of life. I think the main one that came to mind as I was driving around the other day is this idea of being in a kind of desert of relationships in the modern world. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that obviously in this day and age, there are more people on the planet than there um, uh, than there ever have been before in history. By a country mile, by the looks of it, right? Billions and billions of people on the planet. Millions and millions of people in each country. And you can even have multi-millions of people, multiple millions of people in a given city. Yet, people have never felt more lonely and isolated than they do now. I mean, one of the examples that comes to mind is, you know, you speak to the older generations and they talk about how when they were children, they knew not only obviously their immediate families and friends, but they used to know by name and personally all of the people who lived on, along their street. Now, there might have only been a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand people in the town, but everyone knew each other. And the whole social fabric of life was way more uh, rich and intimate than it is today. Today, you can find yourself in a modern metropolis surrounded by, I don't know, hundreds of people in an apartment building. And you might know fewer than 10 of those people, if you're lucky in some cases. You can be surrounded, sat literally sandwiched between people above, below and side to side, yet feel completely isolated from all of them. Very interesting phenomena. Uh, tragic, obviously. Um, but that seems to apply to so many different aspects of the modern world. It gives you this, like the ocean in that sense, it's a great deception. It gives you this appearance of quality, of, of real value, of sustenance, the kind of thing that will sustain us. Yet when we actually go to drink, we find our mouths are very dry. You know, so if we drink from the well of social interaction in the world, we find that it's actually harder than it ever was to before to make concrete, real social bonds with people around us. Now, even then you can say, well, what about, you know, the internet? I mean, I think Facebook is a desert in that sense as well, right? Or, or platforms like it. Facebook gives this appearance of being a rich, deep well of social interaction for us to drink from. But as many of you will know, when you actually go to do it, you find the whole thing is in fact very, very shallow. It's not a deep well at all. It's a very shallow well that gives you the mildest impression of what a real social interaction or what a real relationship should be. Not to mention the thing is full of lies at all levels from people just showing you fake aspects of their lives or not being able to really interact with people properly, right? You can't have the same level of interaction with someone over a Facebook comment or even in the chat compared to what you would do over, you know, a glass of wine face to face, not even comparable in many ways. So there is another desert that we currently swim through or we currently live through, I should say. I think pleasure is another example of that. You know, we have what we would call the real water of pleasure should be joy, really. That is the purest form of it. Happiness, which I think we all have a 
thirst for in our soul, real capital H happiness, real fulfillment and joy. So what do we swim through in the modern world? Well, we have pleasure instead. A million different ways to distract and find pleasure in life, whether that be pornography or binging on video games, uh, sitting in front of the TV for 10 or 12 hours a day watching Netflix. These are all forms of pleasure. They're all forms of entertainment. And yeah, they will keep us entertained. They'll give us that nice little dopamine hit. But where's the real joy and where's the real pleasure? Again, I think we're thirsty for it. Another one that came to mind is information. We are absolutely drowning in information in the modern day uh, from all the different, not least from all the different screens that we come across, but even from all the different publications and newspapers, uh, the thousand different posters we can see on a daily basis to the point where I think most of us block out most of this stuff just as a uh, an automatic response. I imagine our, our information shutters are pretty well sh- uh, closed on, on most things we come into contact with, but even then we're being bombarded with information from every angle at all times, right? But if information is the water, what is the pure form of it? What's the thing we're actually thirsty for? And the thing we're really thirsty for there is truth. Now, this is a real problem because most of what we come across in life, uh, most of the information we come across, sorry, um, is not the water of truth at all. Um, In many cases, at best, it's just confused garble. And in many, many cases, it's uh, pernicious, willful lies to mislead and confuse us in many ways. So here we found ourselves we find ourselves dropped into this sea of information, but we find ourselves thirsty for real truth. And indeed, you know, like drinking the salty water of the ocean, when we drink the cup of this information that we have, not only do we find ourselves still thirsty, but perhaps even more so, because that salt laden those salt laden lies actually weaken us when it comes to our relation to truth. So here we find all these different ways in which we're in this ocean surrounded by all of these different things, but we are in fact in a desert because what we really need isn't there. Um, Now, all of that being said, it doesn't mean these things don't exist. I mean, the first, I think the first cure is to realize that 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 is the case, to see through the fact to see through this uh, this illusion of having an abundance of everything we want and need. Um, I mean, another example that just came to mind is perhaps this idea of uh, being in a in a desert of food. That might seem crazy, right? Because obviously, especially in the Western world, we have the highest uh, access to calories than we've probably ever had in history as well. But arguably a lot of the nutritional value of that food has been decreasing year by year and only gets worse. Um, So perhaps even in that sense, we have an abundance of food, but a lack of nutrition, just as we have an abundance of information and a lack of truth. So about this being needlessly bleak, what's all that reflection for? What does it serve? And I suppose the idea is that Firstly, we have to see that that it is an illusion. The thing that you really don't want to do when you're in the ocean is drink the water, mistaking it. You don't want to drink the salt water, mistaking it for fresh water, right? That is the fatal mistake. So what you first have to do is you you sit upon those waves and think, okay, it's a shame. I really wish this was all drinkable. But if I'm being sensible, I know I can't drink from this, this giant poisoned well. So you have to abstain instead. You have to cut yourself off. You have to say, pull back from the fake social relations. You have to pull back from the uh, terrible food. You have to pull back from the constant stream of lies and nonsense that we're being, uh, that's being shoved at us on a daily basis so that you can take that step back. And, you know, like that old doctor's um, mandate, even if you're not going to cure the problem straight away, at least don't make it any worse. 
And I think we can do that by just seeing things clearly. But then is it without hope then? Are we just going to die of sunstroke instead? No. Because the good thing is, is that despite the fact that we're in this chaotic maelstrom of an ocean, there are certainly islands in the storm, or little lighthouses. And when you when you put your feet on solid ground, you can definitely feel the difference, right? So let's take information as an example. You might be swimming through all the lies and the nonsense. But then when you come across something which is actually true, you know, maybe a book or an argument which is well researched and really logically sound, then it hits your palate like a, a ray of sunshine and you go, ah, that's what I've been missing. That's what it should actually feel like. And it does indeed exist. And you appreciate it all the more as well. If your mouth was full of salt before, when you finally take that sip of fresh water, you go, ah, that's what it tastes like. And it tastes so much better in some senses. Maybe it tastes better because of that. So that gives us a bit of hope. I mean, I think you find that with all of the different things I've just spoken about, you know, so you might have all of these superficial relationships. Let's say you've got a hundred friends that you've made and you think they're friends, but really they're just acquaintances. They're people you know, they're people you do drugs with or you go to parties with. And then one day you find out none of these people are reliable. They're all dishonest. They're all backstabbers. They're all uh, basically a waste of time. And you think, oh, no, I've lost something. I've lost all of these friends. No, you haven't. You haven't lost any friends. You've lost the illusion of a bunch of friends, which is a step in the right direction. And then one day, maybe you realize that of those hundred friends, you had those that one friend, or a pair of friends, maybe, who is in fact extremely reliable, who cares about your good for the sake of your own good, and not just because you're there to entertain them or buy them drinks. Now that is a glass of fresh water, right? And you savor that so much more, and you realize that that one glass of fresh water, that one good friend, is more valuable than all of the fake friends that you could ever have. That one true connection with someone is so much more valuable than a thousand fake connections that you can have on Facebook. And they do exist. So again, it leads us up to this idea that we can appreciate these things so much more when we're finally able to experience them. And the other thing to mention then is that, well, where do we find these things? And I suppose that's a harder question. It depends on everyone's circumstance. It depends on the situations they're in. Um, I can say a bit about how I've been lucky enough to find that in my own life. Um, basically, stick stick to truth for the sake of truth. And uphold beauty for the sake of beauty and goodness for the sake of goodness. Because there will be people out there um, flailing around on their own little rafts who are trying to do the same thing, who all want to say, no, I'm not going to drink this water. I'm going to hold out until I can find something better. I'm looking for the fountain. And what invariably happens, by the grace of God, is that despite how large the ocean might seem, your little rafts are going to bump into each other. And you're going to finally say, oh, you're in this boat as well. Or you're on your little boat too. And then in that case, you can find reality, basically. Um, with those people, you can create proper connections because they're looking for it too. They appreciate it too. Um, because... You know, for example, if you are committed to, say, loyalty and goodness, and this other person is committed to loyalty and goodness, then when you two become friends, the friendship is all the, all the richer. If you are committed to truth and you're looking for that and you want to reject everything else for the truth, then you eventually swim your way towards an island where perhaps truth is being held, or some kind of lighthouse, for example, where things do actually make sense. And so you put that effort through and you find that there are in fact places within this ocean where the truth really does exist, but you have to hold out and work for it. And then you find that 
that lighthouse which brought you to it, that beacon of truth, even if it was only small, that brought you to it, well, you are all the way over in the east and someone else in the west saw that same light and they were brought to it as well. Yeah. And so that's a place where the two of you can meet and you find that, oh, okay, that one island, that one little speck of light in the storm brought you both to it. And now your little island has become a small community, even if it's only two people. You might find that if you then climb that lighthouse and add more fuel to the fire, that little light becomes brighter. And other people who are swimming through this ocean, feeling that salty taste in their mouth, who are wanting something more, look to that light with hope and also find their way to that island and think, ah, okay, I thought it was just me. It turns out there's two of you here. It's ten. Well, there's now a hundred of us on this island who are all building a well and finding that true fresh water that's buried underneath, which makes life all the better. And I think it's good, right? Because, look, we don't really learn or develop in life without struggle. And having to swim against these, against the tides of this, this great ocean, as hard as it is, um, and as hard as, uh, as, as lonely as it can make us feel, persevering and swimming makes us stronger in the long run and it makes us give it gives us a sense that we've really earned this place that we've come to we've really earned the light of this lighthouse we've really earned the company of these people who we can now share our um our values and our commitments with but the thing is you might not have been the kind of person who was worthy to stand in the company of those people if you hadn't strengthened yourself and you might have not been able to strengthen yourself until you first went through the struggle. So it all eventually works towards the good. Yeah, we're swimming in an ocean right now and an ocean is a great desert. We are surrounded by superficiality and hollowness and lies and deception on all sides. And a lot of us really are thirsty for something real. So we're going to have to hoist our sails and, and get going to try and look for that. And we're going to have to wrestle against the storms and the wind. But if we do that, it's better for us in the long run. Because not only will we then eventually get to taste what pure water tastes like, and perhaps even dig down and find where it comes from so that we're never without it again. But the process of doing that may well make us stronger in the long run as well and therefore make us more valuable for the world and the other people around us and for those who need someone else to light the fire or light the beacons to show them where this desert comes to an end. <laughs>